Good day everyone! I am Mirhana A. Kasain of Group 2 from Grade 11 STEM BOAS and today I will present together with Andrea de los Santos the architectural design that we chose which is the Dome of the Rock of Jerusalem. Before we proceed to its structural design, let me give you first some background and history about this. Dome of the Rock was one of the first Islamic buildings ever constructed. It is located on the Temple Mount in the Old City of Jerusalem. It is also an Islamic shrine. In 70 common era, the dome was destroyed during the Roman siege of Jerusalem. The dome was originally collapsed in 1015 and was rebuilt in 1022-23. It is one of the oldest extant works of Islamic architecture. The dome was given to the Augustinian during the Crusades and turned it into church. In 1104, Al-Aqsa Mosque became the royal palace of Baldwin I of Jerusalem. In October 2 of 1187, Jerusalem was recaptured by Saladin. Haram was reconsecrated as a Muslim sanctuary. The Dome of the Rock that has a cross on the top was replaced by a golden crescent and a wooden screen and placed it around the rock below. In 1817, during the reign of Mahmoud II, the large scale of renovation was undertaken. In 1948 until this present time, Israel took control of the Dome of the Rock during its victory in the Sixth Day War. There was a Jordanian rule where Jews were forbidden from entering the Old Sea. The chief rabbis accepted laws of normative Judaism that no Jews were allowed on the mount because of the ritual impurity issue. In 1967, Israel lowered down the Dome of the Rock on the orders of General Moshe Dayan. The Muslim Waqf was invested with authority to manage the Temple Mount Haram al sharif Some groups wished to relocate the Dome to Mecca and replace it with the Third Temple. Today, Muslim believes that the rock commemorates the night journey of Muhammad. And now, let's proceed to its architect or to the persons behind this wonderful creation. The monument was designed and began its construction during the rule of Abad al-Malik, the fifth caliph member of a Muslim dynasty Abad al -Malik. He was born in 646 Medina and died on October of 705 in Damascus. He was a fifth caliph member of the Umayyad Arab dynasty centered in Damascus. The dome was completed in 692 and under the supervision of two financial administrative, Raja Haywa, Yazid Salam, and Sahaba, known as one of the authors of scholarly work following the traditions of Prophet Muhammad. For clear understanding, Abad al-Malik is the one who built the Dome of the Rock. He was just the one who ordered to build it. But the people who managed the building were Raja Haywa, Yazid Salam, and Sahaba. And now let's proceed to its dimension and structure. The Dome of the Rock's golden color dome and Turkish Fian styles dominates the city shape of the old Jerusalem and in the 7th century served as a testament to the power of the new faith of Islam. The structure is basically octagonal. It is topped at the center by a dome approximately 20 meters in diameter mounted on an elevated circular drum standing on 16 supports which is divided into 4 tiers and 12 columns. We have here its interior decoration. The interior of the dome is lavishly decorated with mosaic, fiance, and marble, much of which was added several centuries after its completion. It also contains Quranic inscriptions. The dedicatory inscriptions in Kufic script based around the dome contains the date believed to be the year the dome was first completed. While the name of the corresponding caliphs and builder of the dome was deleted and replaced by the name of Abbasid Caliph al mumun during whose reign renovations took place. And now let's proceed to its exterior decoration. The decoration of outer walls went through two major phases. The initial of the Maya scheme comprised marble and mosaics, much like the interior walls. The dome of the rock has eight sides and the outer walls are octagonal shapes. The heart of the Quran is inscribed across the top of the tile work and was commissioned in 16th century by Suleiman the Lumin. Al Isra, the Surah 17, which tells the story of Isra or night journey, is inscribed above this. For the next part of this presentation, let me give you some previous behind the historical Islamic architecture. 
First, the Dome of the Rock was originally not a mosque. Scholars are still debating its spatial functions. The structure has been mistaken to be a mosque many times, although its spatial identity is widely disputed, like the Kaaba in Mecca. Second, the absence of a distinct entrance to the shrine. Unlike many modern-day successors which have the prominent and ornate entrance gates, the Dome of the Rock doesn't have one. Instead, it has four small, almost invisible doors and the lack of mass facade conveying a hierarchy of form. Third, the motive's details are speculated to the visit paradise. According to Islamic texts, the portion above the arches in the Dome of the Rock have been bedecked with mosaic tiles only in the 16th century. Before that, when the structure was built there, this portion in particular was adorned with glass tiles having typical vegetal motifs, trees, and building as a symbol of paradise. Fourth, it was the only building with an octagonal platform that had any significance for almost a thousand years. During the time of construction of the Dome of the Rock, there were very few built forms with distinct religion identities. What is even more surprising is the fact that the octagonal platform was and remain unique. Elements such as Arabic inscriptions, geometric motifs, and mosaic tiles are typical features carried on as legacies in future Islamic built forms. And lastly, the presence of an underground cave underneath the rock lies a rock hut chamber called the Well of Souls. The chamber is said to be a spot where the souls of the deceased anticipate the judgment day. The chamber consists of two marabs installed by the Umayyads in the Fatimid. Emperors respectively, and very few are allowed to enter this place. There are many trivias about the Dome of the Rock, but I just gave you five of those because we're lacking of time. If you are interested and want to know more of it, you can search it online. Reasons for choosing Dome of the Rock First, we chose Dome of the Rock because of its beautiful and great structure. Second, it has a great history behind it and we want to share it to all of you, especially to those people who want to know something about it. And lastly, the structural design aside, conic sections which are parabola and circle. It also has a unique shape which is optical. It is rare to make a building with that shape. And even it is the oldest, Several years after the undertaking of the dome, the structural design is still on its shape. There are two conic sections that can be seen in the dome of the rock. One is the parabola for the dome itself or the front view of the building, and the other one is circle in its upper part view or when you're inside the dome. The importance of the applied conic sections is it become the resistant to high weight condi conditions such as hurricanes because of the lack of corners, angles, and flat surface. Instead, their curved shape allows wind to pass smoothly over their surface. For the last part of this presentation, we have the conclusion and realization about conic section and the activity. The study of conic section is important not only for mathematics, physics, and astronomy. They are even used in different fields like in architecture, engineering, medicines, and other fields. The application of conic section can be seen every day all around us. Bridges, buildings, and statues use conic section as support system. And lastly, parabola and circle are probably the two most common conics because we can see these two shapes everywhere. That's all and we hope you have learned something in this presentation, especially in our chosen architectural design which is the Dome of the Rock. Thank you for watching.